So as you could probably tell, I'm in the basement and I have this Networks 8v2 made by the fabulous Interlogix. And I have the battery disconnected, but you'll see the system powered on in just a minute. I have a fire alarm. This is a wheel lock HSR uh, exceeder. And we follow the wires. Those all the way. See, there are two wires. These are for the speakers and to the bell circuits. That's right. I'm going to be setting off this fire alarm as if this were a, I guess, fire alarm system uh, from a security system panel. Now, this panel powers by 12 volts DC, so I currently have uh, the strobe option set to 12 volts DC. Uh, you can see that it is, let me take this lamp here, and see it is set to 1575 candela. Well, yeah, you can't really see it too well, but 5075 candela. All right, and then, so right here I have my BG12L, and I have that currently connected to zone eight, which is a fire zone, uh, in addition to the I3 that you guys have seen before. All right, so let's go power on the panel. So in a moment, the uh, system is going to be powered on. Uh, the battery is not going to be functioning uh, just because for purposes of this test. It's not going to be really official. So here we go. All right, so. All right, so now you can see that this is powered on. Uh, we have a service condition uh, due to a clock fault. And yeah. now you will also see that the power light is also blinking because it's the, uh, because there is a battery fault. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be first programming the panel so that it outputs 12 volts DC instead of using the siren driver. Um, in a minute, in a minute that you're gonna see the security system beep. Uh, Oh, and it seems like we have a short uh, due to some sort of problem. Uh, that's a fail on me, so I need to check that out and make sure something isn't right. Um, but yeah, I silenced the alarm. Uh, All right, guys, so I just turned this the system back on. Uh, oh, all right, well, perfect. Uh, we're ready to go then. So, so right now, what we are going to do is we are going to enter into programming mode. And I'm just gonna grab my computer here. All right, so we're going to go into programming mode. So we'll hit start eight. We'll enter in our programming passcode. All right, so first of all, the, sec uh, the service light will be flashing to indicate that you are in a service mode and along with all the lights on the side. Uh, we're gonna hit zero pound to enter into the programming, the, uh, the control panel. Uh, we'll hit 37, which is our location, push pound. Uh, right now we are in segment one, so let's see. All right, and then we're gonna hit start to get to the next section. Uh, we're going to turn on option one in segment two, which is described in the manual as if the siren driver should be should be a voltage output, uh, push uh, one to enable it. So basically these enable the different features on the panel. In segment three, we're gonna just go ahead and exit out that segment. Uh, there are a total of seven segments, so we'll just hit pound and then we'll hit exit. And then we'll hit exit again. All right, and we'll wait for a little bit because uh, the system has to be reconfigured and it has to detect how much voltage is going through the alarm so it can be properly supervised. All right, so I'm gonna show you how Superficial works. If you can see on the label here, uh, you can see that the bells, uh, the bell circuit has to be supervised at all times. Um, I put a resistor back here because that's usually how fire alarms are, uh, well, notification appliances are supervised. Uh, they have to be supervised with a end of line resistor at the end of an alarm. All right, so pretend I'm gonna be a burglar and I'm going to short the bell circuits. So in a minute, uh, you should hear the alarm go off. Hopefully. Interesting. Well, I know how another way how to short, uh, to set this thing off. By the way, this is set to continuous low volume. So we'll just disconnect it. 
All right, you can see that the alarm just is about, has just went off. And you connect it, the bell circuit has turned on. I don't know what happened if I shorted this. Now we're going to go out. Alright, so, we're going to here. So, if we go into start two, you can hear that we have a overcurrent fault or some, I, I don't know why this is displayed as one. I think it should be displayed as two because it's a siren fault, but there's a overcurrent fault. And it has to be fixed, so we'll hit star 7. Oh. Alright, and we have that clear. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to set this thing off in code 3. Alright, so you, I have the BG12 here, and yeah, let's say I find a fire in the basement. Set this. So the strobe is not flashing, uh, primarily because this is coded and security systems are too primitive and they don't have the option to do wheel locks. So the code will, uh, so the strobe will be flashing at about code three, along at the same time with the alarm. Let's go ahead and reset that. All right, to silence it, we're just gonna hit in our code. Right, and then we'll reset it. Eight went out uh, a little bit early because I set, reset the pulse station. All right, now let's say that we are in distress and we need to stop the Virgo alarm. Now, in this scenario, uh, the, there's continuous power output being applied to the wheel lock exceeder and the strobe is flashing normally. It is also being sounded in continuous. Actually, let's try something. Interesting. So you can also see that higher alarms have a higher priority. So I'm reset the system and it is still flashing. So I'll go ahead and wait on that for a little bit. See if it re-alarms. Yep, it does re-alarm. Or no. So we'll go ahead and acknowledge that. Let's go ahead and reset it. All right, and we'll reset it. All right, and everything's reset. Now I'm going to be changing up a feature on the wheel lock uh, exceeder that will switch everything to code 3. All right now that we have done that uh, We are going to set off the uh, uh, police alarm uh, Well, actually, let's just test slash drill All right What I essentially did is that I set the coding option on the wheel lock exceeder to code 3 and because continuous power output is being applied, uh, the strobe is flashing normally and it is going, and the sounder is going on code 3. Well guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please go ahead, like, rate, comment, subscribe, whatever. Uh, you know the deal. If there's a problem in my video, go ahead and let me know and I'll try to make it, uh, make these videos better. So, yeah. 
I will see you later. Hi guys, a quick update on the project, and uh, please don't mind about the really noisy room. It's uh, the project right now; it's on hold. Uh, I'm busy due to school stuff and exams, which is why I'm in this noisy room in the first place. Uh, so I'm trying to manage my schedule from there. That being said, I do plan to release it by the end of May if delays persist, but it could be done earlier. Also, uh, thank you all for motivating me. The continued support in the uh, within the community has made me more eager to finish it, so I can't wait to get started on it again. Uh, and all right. That's the only update I have for also. See ya.